The following KQED production was produced in high definition. My name is Matt Golden, and I'm a founder of Sustainable Spaces, which is a San Francisco-based home energy efficiency company. And we work directly with homeowners to analyze their whole houses and help them put together a roadmap uh, that says, here are the first steps you should take towards efficiency, and really take them all the way from things like lighting and appliances, insulation, right through high efficiency heating and cooling systems, and all the way to renewables. For one, I want uh, the home to feel more comfortable. You know, I always feel a little self-conscious that people have to wear sweaters or turtlenecks or even keep their jacket on when they come into my home. So I do want the home to be more comfortable for us and our friends. But I also want to reduce our, our bill and uh, to, do, to make decisions that are better for the environment. So we're here today to do a, what we call a home performance screen up, which is this whole house assessment. Uh, the device behind me is called a blower door, which we're using to measure air leakage. So the blower door is kind of emblematic of energy auditing in homes and it achieves two things. One is we can measure the amount of air leakage in the house and convert that into air changes per hour. So how much of your air is escaping every hour and being replaced by outdoor air. And then we can also use it to actually identify the leaks in the house. So we're going to be pushing some air into the house so that we can use uh, the smoke wand which releases kind of a chemical smoke so it doesn't move with temp it has no temperature so it just follows air currents and uh, we'll be able to watch it actually move out of the house through leaks in the building envelope. And this is what we'll use actually in the process of fixing the house. So we can measure how much leakage using this computer, uh, but when it comes to actually locating it, locating the source, we're going to be using some smoke and actually watching the air move. So the leakage that we're seeing here, uh, it, it's actually leaking most likely through this wall into the attic. And so this is kind of the symptom of the leak. And the way to fix this is actually to go up in the attic and seal it from the top. So what's interesting, when we get up in attics a lot of the time, you know, especially homes like built in the 90s that will have 39 can lights. And like attic will actually be lit up from all the light escaping from the can lights in the first place. So all these little adjustment holes are actually connections between your house and outside air. What typically is happening is that, again, the hot air in your house is rising. It gets that and it's literally pushing up against your ceiling. So when we talk about air sealing, you know, we want to do the doors and the windows, and that's something everybody can do themselves. But really, the bulk of the air leakage in the house is occurring between the house and the attic. So oftentimes, you know, especially in, in, in California, we find that the amount of energy that we're losing through air leaks in our house, through things like this, but again, mostly up in the attic, has as much, we're losing as much energy as we lose through all of our windows combined in the house. We, we talked earlier about how spiders always put their webs where there's airflow, so there's a good guess right off the top and we're right that there's airflow right there. So this door is actually, this, this whole door is actually pretty well weather stripped, which we kind of guessed from the inside um, with this gasket. And we, we, we noticed in that there's some leakage in the corner and that's occurring. And there's two, a couple interesting things here. So, you know, we have a gap which is causing that air leakage to occur. And there's this discoloration, which is again where we're filtering dirty air. So whenever we see dirty spots and also cobwebs, that's a good indication of airflow. Uh, so if you're in your house and you see that, you don't need a fancy blower door and a smoke wand and infrared camera, and you've got air movement and a leak occurring. So this is the return duct for the furnace system in this house. So this is the, this is the place where all the air is pulled out of the house before it's heated. And, uh, it's, it's negatively pressurized, so we're pulling air through the space. And what's interesting and kind of typical of a lot of homes this age is the fact that it's actually not sealed. So when we look actually in the return, which just runs under the floor, we see there's all sorts of connections between this, this pan, and you can see there's a lot of dust in here, and the actual floor system. And so we're drawing in air, not just from the house, but also from other joist bays and other, and other access points, and even directly from outside. So any leaks in the, any of these leaks or penetrations tend to be easier than drying air, you know, all the way through this long duct system. And so you're pulling a lot of air from the from the uh, mechanical room and also again the attached garage. So one of this, we're going to start with some just preliminary fi findings that we had from going around the house, and we'll, we'll be coming back to you in a couple days with a really specific set of recommendations. But Ryan is getting a lot of the data and putting together some of the uh, ideas for what the roadmap is going to look like. So maybe you can give her some of the specifics. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the first goal is just to make sure that the hot air stays inside the house. That way your furnace turns on once, 
the hot air stays. And then all the thermal mass in your house is able, is able to absorb that heat and mm -hmm. store it. That way your furnace runs less. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing we're looking at. The other was uh, just how insulated your envelope was. Mm -hmm. So the back walls there, they are insulated, but your ceiling is not. Mm -hmm. and so we're going to look at what we can do there. There's a lot of different options which we'll explore. Okay. Um, but then the other big one was just how well your actual system is functioning. So your furnace and your ductwork. So on average, um, the average system leaks about 30% of the hot air that is distributing. And so what we want to do is make sure that the hot air is getting to your house in the first place. Mm -hmm. And then also make sure that your furnace is functioning properly. So we'll be able to compare the size of your furnace to what your house needs and if it's way oversized then we can rec make recommendations on a properly sized system that's going to heat your house throughout really consistently and efficiently. Great, yeah. looking forward to it. Yeah. All right.